It's dedicated to lives loved and lost in the Warrington bomb, but it's built on a foundation of peace and hope. 12-year-old Tim Parry and 3-year-old Jonathan Ball will forever be remembered through the work being done at the centre to prevent conflict. Downtown Radio and Cool FM's sister station in Liverpool, Radio City, recorded a special programme at the centre with presenter Pete Price. The audience of mainly young people from Northern Ireland and England had come together to consider how the world has moved on in the 20 years since the atrocity. With my background in reporting conflict around the world, I was asked to sit on the panel of experts alongside Tim's father, Colin. He co-founded the Foundation for Peace with his wife and Tim's mum, Wendy. We were joined by Kelly Simcock, the centre's programme manager, and David Wells, a counter-terrorism consultant. Colin is passionate about the work they do there. I think we've made a, a significant contribution to conflicts wherever we've been involved. I mean, what we do isn't, isn't highly scientific or technical. We bring people together. We, we create a safe environment where people can come in, in comfort and safety and lower their guard and speak openly to people they may never have met, people they may fear, they may distrust, they may think they have reasons for hating them. And remarkably, the simple process of dialogue and eating together and playing together and talking together lowers the barriers and they suddenly realise, hey, I quite like this person. And that is a major contribution. One of its main aims is to equip young people like Laura Smith and Kasia Vikovska with the leadership skills to resolve conflict in their own communities. Um, it's taught me that uh, know how to, when, it, when there is a conflict, know how to resolve that conflict um, by the both parties and just bring them together and uh, get both sides of um, the story and uh, use the technique of uh, mediation. It's something that we can take back home and apply and um, at, at present we're thinking of doing some, some, some work together, carry on, because this project had ended for us last, last week. That's when all of us are going to get um, our qualifications. It's OCN uh, Leadership for Peace. And hopefully we want to work together as a team, as, as a group, and do something positive, make a change back home. Lisbon youth worker Francis Ferris and the city's good relations officer, David Mitchell, have both seen how the peace programmes here have benefited the community. These are young leaders in our community, so it's 18 to 25. Um, this is a credit leadership for peace, where they bring this back for working on communities. They are young leaders. The, a lot of what's going on in the community development work, youth work, within their local communities. Yeah, it's important in Northern Ireland, isn't it? You've got two, two sections of the community and, and community workers working together. Yes, very much so. You know, this radio show tonight, we, we, we talked about how far Northern Ireland's come and it has came a long way. Uh, people in the main line, mainland might not see that because they don't see the flags issues and stuff, but... There's been a lot of work on the ground and we're certainly not in the place we were 20 years ago. And so, uh, a peace centre like that helps? Yes. Uh, the peace centre is great and we have a lot of great ideas because we are from the Lisbon area and the main site, there's going to be a peace centre there and we want to make sure that youth projects and stuff like this will, will take place in it. A day later and that idea of keeping the link with the Warrington Centre was something Colin and Wendy had in mind when the spotlight was on them again when they flew into Stormont. Very obviously we would love to collaborate and, and help in any way we can with any advice and tips we've learned down the years, things to do, things not to do perhaps, because you know if we've done it already then we can be of help to others who are just embarking on that road. So we've said that to them. Uh, at last night's event you talked about you were surprised that peace studies uh, aren't taught in schools. Would you like to see that developed and, and put into practice right across the board? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I'd, I'd have it taught in all British, Irish, world schools. I mean, the humanity can be so uh, unkind and cruel and misguided and evil if it's manipulated the wrong way and if there are no counter-narratives. And I think introducing peace studies, certainly in the schools in our countries, would make a major difference in getting young people to understand difference isn't something to be afraid of. Different skin colour, different God, different politics, so what? Judge people on who they are, not the badge that they were. And I think that would be terribly important. Back in Warrington, the doors remain open to anyone from any background wanting to work towards peace.